Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and today I'm going to show you how to do this stenciling on our tall porch sign. Um, we've got some cute pumpkin face embellishments. You're gonna love it. It is going to make the best welcome for your house. All right, guys, here we're gonna get started. Our tall porch signs tend to come in multiple pieces. It will be either a two part or a three part, depending on if you're six foot tall or uh, four feet tall. And we've showed how to prep and do all of the the basics to your board, including sealing knots and um, um, how to roll the finish on, um, the coats, the sanding, how to get the board, all of that stuff is in the previous video, so you'll wanna check that out. And then of course, subscribe and ring the bell if you want to um, be notified when we have new things. So with this, I'm gonna show you how to do the layout. Now normally, you would lay this out <clears throat> top to bottom and centered if I was doing it Normally, I would use a T-square and make sure I had even amounts of space on both sides. But we've got a special kind of little trick that we're doing here. So what we're doing is we're going to put a bunch of pumpkin faces on one side. And so what we'll do, what I do need to know is top and bottom. So that is, some glasses going. That's about two inches. And that is way over three inches. So we'll get that centered down here a little bit better. And actually, I think it's already centered for me because it's the size of the board. I'm being very silly. Let's see if that's even. So just under three and just under three. Okay, <clears throat> so we already did the work for you. So what I wanna do with this though is I, now that I know it's the size of my board, I'm going to shove it over the width of, I want it right on the edge, the width of my widest letter in that row. And I think it's gonna be my M and my W because they have that big old giant honking thing sticking out there. Um, the serifs. Okay, so we're gonna walk that all the way over, get it right, and I'll use the mylar to make me straight. And then we always do a dry run when you're doing tall porch signs with multiple stencils, you do the dry runs so that you don't end up with wonky measurements and you don't end up with like, ooh, I left too much space at the bottom. If you end up doing that and you leave too much space, you could always put a little bit of detail like a, a plaid or a pattern or something like that if you didn't want to start over. So if you do mess it up, know that there's things you can do to fix it. Okay, so looking at that, yeah, my W is definitely my wide guy. Okay, and that looks like my mylar is pretty darn straight. So then I'm going to take a piece of tape to adhere. Be careful when you're taping. Um, as we go through the video, I'm just gonna sprinkle these like pro tips throughout so that you will um, just pick up better, better skill sets for as you're painting and doing the things. Um, if your paint is fresh and you tape on it, then you can um, maybe lift. So there's a couple things you can do. You can tape through something you know you're gonna paint anyway, like that, that, that L. I'm gonna take this piece away because I need that C and I could also give myself a little bit of tape through the C, okay? And that way we always tape in two places so that the stencil won't walk around. If I take the tape off of my C, let's take that back off, and I only have one piece, it can turn and do all kinds of janky stuff. Okay, and I'll make sure I'm straight again. So if I taped over here and I peeled my paint up because it's fairly fresh paint, then I might be super sad. So um, I don't wanna have a chip come out. I could just base it black, but it takes a little bit more work to fix a chip than it does to just base coat. Um, that's, that's another whole video on its own. When you're getting ready to base your letters, um, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're doing some basic techniques so that you don't have any bleeding under. That's the number one complaint people have. Okay, so what we wanna do is you could, number one, use a clear medium like the sealer or another kind of clear medium, and you could load it, offload it, and seal your letter under. You could also base coat it with the stencil it on with the color that your base coat is, and that will seal under. I think it's better and easier to just follow a couple of simple steps, and then you don't have to double work, triple work to get your um, technique down. 
So we're gonna use a dry dome brush. These are shaped in a dome so they don't splay out and splay underneath your um, stencil. I'm gonna pick up dry paint, meaning paint that's well shaken and is not um, super runny. So if you have a very wet paint, you're gonna need to spend a little bit more time on the next step. So I'm gonna pull just a little bit out. That's what I've got on my brush. And then I'm going to come over to my paper towel and I need you to know these brushes are not allergic to hard work. So you can be really kind of go at it with them and you just wanna wipe them off. I'm really applying pressure on that. I do about five or six scumbles on there just to take the excess. So we load, then we offload. And if you do those steps, then you'll never have a problem with bleeding under, okay? Now we'll come over to our W, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a technique called um, swirling. So I'm just going to lightly swirl. Nothing that we do from this point forward is going to be pounding or aggressive or any of that kind of stuff. So you just want to lightly swirl. Just like the base coat, it's much easier to do a couple of light coats. The normal traditional kind of... Um, way to stencil is to do this pounding thing okay and then that does make your letters or your stencils it does make it coat faster but then it's super heavy then you're bleeding under and then it takes way more drying time so there's a whole lot of disadvantages to it not very many advantages so we just keep going on our swirly swirls by the time i get down to my c over here i'm going to be dry at the top and i can start over and this is not a, um, a it's not a heavy feeling when you're um, doing the swirling when I'm doing the pouncing I am doing a workout that is literally cardio so then we pick up a little bit more paint I wish you could see it better because it's white on white okay and then lightly 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 I am just dusty I'm letting the brush almost do the work for me I'm just being a driver. Okay, I'm gonna go back up to my W and show you how to finish one so that then you don't have to watch paint dry um, for like seven letters. Okay, so now this is, feel it for dryness, it's dry. Repeat the step. And this looks like it'll take three coats. Okay, we'll take a little peek. Okay, so that's perfect. Lay it back down. The nice thing about stencils versus like vinyl um, decals and things like that is um, you can add a lot of painterly techniques to them. You can make patterns on your lettering. Um, they don't peel off when the weather finally softens them and does that kind of thing, but they're also repositionable. Um, we had a, a situation where a friend and I went to a class that was a vinyl stencil um, kind of situation. So it wasn't like the stick it on and leave it um, thing. It was the stencil through it. And when she got hers on, she didn't have it straight and you can't see through it. And so hers, she got her beautiful background, beautiful everything, got it all finished. And then she lifted off the vinyl, which of course you can't reuse. And it was crooked and so now she had to basically sand and start all the way over because she couldn't peek underneath um, so stencils are really superior and they're reusable and washable and we have a video for that as well um, how to wash your stencils okay there is a time to stipple and that is when you're in your corners of things um, when i get into these little sharp corners they don't like to swirl very well so i'll stipple and then I'll just kind of do the last final coat with a stipple action and then everything will be kind of even. When you're stippling, it can look a little bit like a snowman. Um, it has like an, a texture like snow or something like that. <clears throat> what we do for that is we will stipple and then in one last little refining stage step we will go and do just a little swirl over the top and that smooths everybody out and then you don't have snowman letters let's take a little look shall we all right so that's 
what's your lettering look like? He could almost use one more swirl step. Um, when you're coating over something super dark like black with something super light like white, um, it tends to take a few more coats. And other colors of concern can be yellows and reds. Neither of those have lots of pigments in them, and so they're difficult to cover over. And you can undercoat in that case, and we'll cover that in another video. All right, I'm going to continue on down. When I get down to my C and I'm gonna marry the two stencils together, I'll bring you back so that you can see how you mush them together. All right, I've got my Welk all based and it's also dry. So that's really important because you don't wanna be laying another stencil on top of a wet area and then smear. Um, so be careful with that. And what we're going to do with this is I'm gonna take my tape away from the bottom I'm going to move it over. I'm going to relocate it over to the side. I still want it taped in two places so I don't shift. Then I'm going to lift that and I'm going to line this stencil up with this. And stencils have a really neat way of having a nice straight edge on them. All of our stencils are laser cut so that straight edge is going to be perfectly straight when you have it. So that's a nice way to line up the edge and make sure from this side to this side that you're not walking. And I do feel that I am a little bit walking. So I'm gonna shift that over because that looked a little bit skinnier. And then make sure that we're lined up here and that looks good. Now I'll get out my tape and tape the lower area. Okay, and now I'm secure. And now I can take this one away. Okay, so now I don't, I won't be basing this C and I will be basing these. Okay, and we'll get started and do that off camera as well so you don't have to watch paint dry. All right, we got our welcome all done and now it's time to do the pumpkins. This is the magic part. Okay, so um, what we're going to do with this, we have three different pumpkin shapes and we have a bountiful amounts of faces um, and so these have some happy and some eerie and some creepy and some all the things so um, you can choose if you want your happy um, pumpkin faces or something a little bit more on the gnarly side whatever you want i'm going to go for a little bit sillier i think i'm going to choose some pumpkin faces there are six spaces for six here and two more, maybe this guy. Okay, and we'll leave these guys out. And then, so choose your pumpkin faces out of your kit. And we'll start with the pumpkin shapes. So I'm gonna build from the bottom up. If I end up building and I don't end up with six, um, that's gonna be perfectly fine but I am gonna just go ahead and give myself that dry run, that dry measure. They're gonna be slightly overlapping. We're gonna skip the stems. Okay, that gets me about halfway up, so I think that's gonna be fine. And then I think I want this one to be my front guy. So I want that to actually be where I'm going to. So this guy goes leany, leany this way. And this guy goes leany, leany this way. And then this guy goes this way. Okay. Now we're gonna have to do some shenanigans here, okay? Because I don't want these lines to all be intersecting lines. <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to mark, I wanna put a piece of tape in two spots to hold my stencil. Start with the bottom one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mask with some tape just to tell myself where the overlap is. And then I'm actually gonna secure him as well. Give him two corner attaches. And then right here, I want this guy. Okay, let's take out the Triple Threat Ghost Rider. This has got a white ceramic lead, a gray ceramic lead, and a roller ball. And I'm just gonna add, ooh, I gotta replace the lead on that. So I'm gonna mark 
and mark rather than trying to estimate. And then I will take this up and give myself a piece of tape. Whoops, wrong side. I got the tape on the side I don't want the paint on. And then tape against the other piece. Okay, so now I'm ready to do pumpkin number one. So we're gonna use a nice yellowy color and we're gonna go back over with a brighter yellowy color. This color, yellow, is almost like a moonbeam yellow and it has some white in it. So you can see that um, somebody has toned this with some white and that means it's gonna base coat really good because white does a much better job basing than yellow. So this is like a pre-coat. Get into our brushes, get a fresh paper towel. And then because these are skinny lines, this is gonna be a stipple moment because um, the swirling doesn't like to go in skinny places. So I will lift this up. And uh, Rusty, I don't know if you can see this or not. Maybe I'll bend him back. Never bend your stencils. So just start stippling right there on the tape. And then we wanna stay off of our letters as well. I'm gonna tape him back up. <clears throat> and I'll get this angle a little bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna use my multi-masker, which is a little masking shield to keep it off of my letters. Lift that up. And then grab a second one. Okay. It helps if you make these sticky with a stick and restick. Um, I have not done all of mine. Okay, and then we'll move that mask. And then we mask down here. That keeps everything nice and clean. And then we load more paint. <clears throat> Come down here. And now I'm done with that. Okay, I'm pretty certain I'm gonna want a second coat of this, so I'll just go back to my maskers. All right, now we're gonna go in with a brighter yellow. This is just a really obnoxiously bright yellow. I'm gonna neutralize my paintbrush <clears throat> wipe out all the paint always shake your paints if you haven't used a yellow in a long time you're going to want to make sure it's shook I hope that you are enjoying this there's such a cool technique that I'm going to show you when it comes time to do the face and the eyes and stuff like that you're going to love it all right so we're going to neutralize by Loading some paint and then wiping it all off. That makes the brush be the color that I'm gonna want it. And then I'll pick up paint and wipe it off. Okay, so we mask. And I'm hoping just one coat, oh yeah, that's doing good. Little dab will do us. Okay, so now we'll take that away. And we have our pumpkin shape. Pumpkin number one. Now we'll release this guy. And because he's on top, what we're gonna do is we're going to mark the same way that we did the other one but he's gonna be the top one. Do I have to wait in that? No, I don't. I think I can build it backwards. Okay, so I won't do that, but I am gonna to have to mark him where 
where he doesn't continue now. Okay. Definitely out of lead. Um, they make refills for this, and we will definitely be, have to do a video for you guys. <clears throat> okay. So, I actually am going to do this the opposite way. So, I'll take this, fold him over, and then take my little, oops. Tape you and tape you. Okay. Now we're going to go back into that moon colored yellow. And I really don't need to neutralize this. It'll take care of itself. Okay, I do need a little bit of masking. Right there. When you get wet areas, make sure that you're wiping off the excess paint or switch masters. And notice, um, this is a really good point. This paint is wet all on here. If I slide my masker through and then slide it off the edge, I could make a big like scumble um, place. So you wanna be careful about what is on your stencil as well. So make sure that you're not spreading things around. I could come up here and go to work over here while I'm waiting for that to dry. So that's what I'll do. We invented this multi-masker and it has quickly become our number one selling product. Um, it is just such a little lifesaver. And then we repeat. One of the things that's really wonderful about stencils, um, I'm sitting here thinking, you could freehand these um, pumpkin shapes. It would be, they'd be lumpy and not perfect or whatever, but to base coat three to base coat a line three times is almost an impossibility. You're never going to get it straight. You're never going to be on the same path. You're going to be a little bit wonky. It's going to get sloppy quick. So um, one of the things that's really lovely about stencils is they're perfect every time. If you keep it secure, you're going to have the right line, the same line that you want every single time. And so you can get all your basing done without any work. One of the things that um, I realized was so perfect with the Mylar is you can bend it and flex it and keep it off of your painted area because it just has that beautiful like memory and everything. Um, so that's one of the beautiful things about the multi-maskers is I can just lift that right over any area that is messy. Okay, so that is that one. And now I'm going to go ahead and off camera, I'm going to finish these because I don't want you to be bored. All right, I've got all of my pumpkin outlines done and I did decide that um, I would go ahead and leave three of the stems showing. I like the idea of it ending at the very top of the welcome with the stem like that. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna take our little faces and we're gonna decide who fits who and where. Just kind of lay them out. And we're going to want to cant them every which way. I think maybe. It's pretty cute. Okay. I 
All right, do I think I like that? I think I do. Okay, um, one thing I also want to mention, I use the Ever Love and Heck out of my multi uh, maskers, and I think they're about as thick, double the thickness as they normally would be. This would be when you have paint buildup on a stencil like that, that's when you want to go ahead and wash them. Okay, so, and that's in that video, so that it's super easy, warm, soapy water, gentle, little scrubbing, but it's just all the tips for washing your stencils are in that video. Okay, so um, go over here and decide if I think we're canted enough. You really want to stress the fact that they go each way. Okay. Squint my eyes. Whenever I'm doing a layout like that, I squint at it so I can kind of see the whole picture. Okay. So I think we're ready. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple pieces of tape on each one of these to keep them in place. All right. So our special technique happens after we get the faces and the mouths on and they're dry. So I'm going to show you this one, at least the first step, and then it's just going to be a repeat of the steps. So go here. I am going to go ahead and stipple for coverage. Because I'm stippling for coverage, what I can do is I can go all the way up and do all of my first coats. By the time I'm at the top, I'll come right back down and do my second coat of the um, moon yellow and then I will go into my last and final coat with that brighter brighter gold color so um, because of that I can stipple and things will dry really fast and one note one of those pro tech tips um, is when I'm stippling in a big open area what I like to do is I like to go around my edges straight up and down and just kind of get them rimmed. And I stencil, I uh, stipple on my plastic. I don't push from the middle into the plastic. So I'm on top of the plastic, kind of like bridging the two pieces. So here's my hole and here's my plastic. I'm stippling right, right across where they join. And that way um, stuff doesn't get pushed under. Okay, and I do have I'm tucking everything behind the lettering, so where you have that little bit just poking out right there. Multi-masker to the rescue. I'm going to work my way through the faces and I'll see you back here in three base coats each. All right, guys, I have got my three coats on here on all of my faces. And now I want to talk about our very magical technique that I want to share with you. Um, this bucket, I put all my um, things. These are Ikea buckets. I put them all into a single tote or in the case of all my different colors, I might put them alphabetically. But these are Deco Arts Media Acrylics. And the Media Acrylic has a iridescent it has some pearl it has all that don't care for the iridescence and the pearls so much myself this is personal um, but the regular media acrylics they come in really tiny bottles you think that you're gonna get ripped off um, but they are so magically strong they have no filler in them so they're pigment 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 so if you need a richness in your paintings, in your crafting, in anything that you do, these are magic. Um, so I wanna show you what I mean by that. So I'll put this away. I've got the, this is, you're gonna laugh at the name, Quinacridone um, Gold. And it does not look like gold, it looks like a kind of a ox blood kind of color. Um, and so this is whatever the Quin, people shorten it to Quin Gold and Quin whatever, there's a bunch of the Quins. Um, I have got my bright color on my palette. Um, that's the third coat that I did. I'm using a ink sweeper, okay? And then I'm gonna double load and I'm going to mist. Oh, let me find my mister. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some water in our mister. Um, when you, you never can see these, but trust me, take a little squirt bottle and do it on your palette paper. It is magic. 
when you spray and keep spraying in the same place, the water droplets get bigger and bigger. So you can choose which water droplets to pick up and they're attracted to a wet medium. So it's really, it's like a magic trick. You do it at a child's birthday party, you're gonna be the hero. All right, so we're gonna leave these screens on, this um, stencil on, we're gonna use it as this, and I was doing some experimenting. There's a way to do this with brushes. It's called floating, it's a big thing. You have to know how to use your brush, you have to know how to load your brush, you have to know how to control the water, you have to know all those things. So I am trying to show you a way to do this without having to know all the things. So we're making it easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load just a little bit of our entire dauber with the color that is on there, okay? So get a little bit more loaded. And then I'm gonna pick up just a couple of the droplets and I'm gonna mushy mushy, get it kind of squished in there. And so this is a very squishy dauber. So I wanna just kind of get it loaded. So I'm trying to neutralize the color and then I'm going to pick up with one side of my dauber with that really rich color. And then I'm going to just go ahead and take that and rub it back and forth. I don't want this sopping wet. This is not squishy wet at all. But watch what this does to our eyes. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull. I'm just gonna brush it against the edge and it makes this glazed look that fades because we have like a little rainbow look on there. Okay, so that's what we're looking for is like a nice faded thing and then I'll just keep going over there. And I wanna do this on the edges. Be careful of things that are staying white. And I'll show you that effect in just a second. If you get something that's not blending, use the other side and just kind of stipple it down, just kind of pounce it down. And then you can reload over your whole brush. This is your brush. Now, what you want to be careful of is don't mix up your sides. Don't load this side with that dark color because it will not do a thing. So you want to keep your dark on your dark side and then your neutral on your neutral side. And then just keep it a little bit moist. Now I'm going to go back over here. I'm just going to go up and down, reload a little bit of that deep red. And then if I feel like I'm getting a little bit juicy, I can just give it a squish, okay? Peanut. Okay. So then I can come over here. Nothing like wrangling four foot tall boards. Okay, I can go over here and just wipe it. Maybe a little bit at the bottom. And then I'm gonna move my way up. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the outside edges of my eyes and I'm doing the outside edges of my mouth and then I'm doing underneath the mouth. I don't want it all to walk into the middle. So I'm gonna do that. Let me show you what this one looks like. Keep that guy going there. I think I want a little bit more right here. So if I want more, I can load more. The magic of these is that the pigment is sheer. And so what it does is it sits on top of your paint and it makes it this, I don't know, like it gives it life. Um, they're incredible. Um, we're gonna have to put either affiliate links or send you a link to DecArt. We don't carry these anymore. Um, there's a whole bunch of supply chain things and we just decided to just stay out of it. Okay, so now we go and we lift. And look at how cool that looks. Isn't that amazing? So you have that just that edge of the thing that just has that neatness to it. And then we're gonna add one more effect with an obnoxious yellow color. And I've already shaken this. And we're just gonna take any small brush. Hang on a second, I'm gonna go get a small brush. Got my smaller brush. And so we're gonna go into our obnoxious yellow color, which is super just, um, just super yellow. 
And I'm not going to wipe it off on my paper towel because I'm not trying to stencil with it and I'm not trying to cover. Notice right here how sheer that is. I just you know, picked up a little bit of it and smeared it and you can see the white right through it. Now I don't wanna scoop it up. I'm just picking it up. But we can go in this lighter area and we could just add daubs of the yellow. So see, that's not super um, technical right there, just in the lighter area. And that's gonna make it look a little bit more illuminated and it's so cool, you won't believe it. Okay, so now I'm going to finish the rest of these the same exact way and we'll come back and finish the project. So I've got all of these with one coat of my blend um, technique. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my Quinn Gold and then what I can do is I can just touch it in the corners just to deepen it, just to give it a little bit more darkness depth. Now that I'm dry, you can pounce it a little bit with these. So these can be pouncers as well. So I'll just go down and I will make, I think I like the pouncing for deepening because it's not wiping anything back. Just get a little bit more oomph. Use your maskers. Yeah, this is gonna look good. I'll bring you back in two seconds. All right, I am there. I did not put the yellow on everything. I'm gonna show you that once I remove um, the fun they look okay so don't they look like they are having a lit party <laughs> how super fun and you'll notice if you look really closely if I look right here it's not perfectly blended but it kind of doesn't matter because if you think about when you see shade and twinkle lights and stuff you're gonna get that kind of ambient kind of sparkle so now I'll pick up my dome brush. It's just a little dome. And I'll just go through and make some highlights. Don't get messy. Don't go outside of the lines. And I'm literally just kind of scumbling it on. You could put more if you wanted to do, like if I went down here, I could go with a second layer of that yellow. And because it's so transparent, it will sit and not cover up. So it'll glow, but it won't cover. All right, and I'll just finish those. Okay, so I've got my yellow on all of them. And now I wanna add just a little bit more magic. I've got a little bit of just straight up white paint on my dirty brush and it, drying it off just a little. I'm not scumbling it off. I'm just drying it barely. And then I'm gonna just add a bit of sparkle and maybe just give it a little rub to blend. Keeping it more to the inside. If you feel like it gets a little bit stripey or a little bit um, weird, we can go over with a glaze of our obnoxious yellow. Okay, so um, if you don't like that, let's see, let me show you what that would look like. So we can go straight into just a brush with some of that yellow in it. It's transparent, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna cover no matter what we do. And I can just go right over the top of that white and that will give it almost like a Thomas Kincaid look to our pumpkin with the glowing lights, so. Yeah, that, that makes me happy. All right, I love how bright these are and I feel like my white is fighting with my pumpkins just a little bit. So this is one of those things that you do um, at the very end of your project, you take, and it's not the end, but we're about to get ready to finish it. So um, at the very end, you, you squint your eyes and you see which thing is doing which thing and which one do you want to be more important and you can back things up, you can pull things forward and you can do all of that with paint and color. Okay, so we're gonna take our super rough, this is 60 grit sandpaper, and we're gonna go right over our lettering. And 
and make it look a little bit haunted, a little bit dreamy. Control yourself when you get real close to your pumpkin faces. Yeah, I'm already digging that so much better. Just brush off the excess. You can even go a little bit more if you wanted to. Yeah. Now what I'm going to need to do is go a little bit with my sanding into my faces, but not into my yellows. So if I was to do this project one more time, because we're kind of designing it in real time with you, um, what I would do is I would sand the black first so that the whole thing is universally sanded and then I would come in and sand my letters at the end. Yeah, that's fun. Ooh. One thing that I just started doing is I just started turning my hand and going at an angle. You definitely want to keep it straight with the board. Don't be going all different directions with this. You want to go straight. Okay, now we wipe them all off and the next thing that we do is we learn how to seal and preserve our project.